So people seem to be interested in antennas. I'm getting a lot of views on uh, some of the videos that I've made. One of the questions that keeps coming up is antenna gain. How do you measure antenna gain? Can you use the spectrum analyzer to, mean, to measure antenna gain? Is SWR related to antenna gain? You know, so what is antenna gain? So we need to fundamentally understand what antenna gain is, and then we can see if we can measure it. So in order to understand antenna gain, I want to show you a very, very simple concept first using optics, because everybody has real world experience with this one. It's a lot of difficulty thinking about radio waves because you can't see them, you can't touch them, you don't really interact with them, you just don't, you just don't have a good sense of what radio waves do. But everybody knows what light does, but, you know, ever since you were a kid, you know what light does. And so let me show you uh, some simple concepts. I'm going to be using an LED. You've seen this one before. This, this is a 12 volt LED. Uh, it's got a lot of LEDs in it, but it's just a, it's just a 12 volt lamp. And I'm going to be using a, a light meter. Okay. So this is a nice light meter, Minolta. Uh, when you turn it on, it automatically calibrates with the lens cap on. It knows that the lens cap is on. When you remove the lens cap, then this is the optical sensor, and it measures uh, units of lux. Um, Candelas per meter squared, or that's uh, yeah. Anyway, so lux uh, is, a, is is just a number. Okay, it tells you how bright the room is, right? So uh, the uh, the lights are on, and now the lights are off, right? It goes down, right? It goes up 600. Put my hand over it, 30, right? So so it sees the shadow. So this is a light meter. All right. So if we have an LED and we bring the LED over the light meter, it's going to go up because we're going to put a lot of light on here, right? So how do we, how do we make the number go up? Well, we can drive the LED harder. We could put more current into the LED, make it more bright. Uh, we could bring it closer. Uh, we could bring it farther away. Um, uh, and we might be able to do some other things. So. Uh, one of the things we can do is, if you think about an LED, uh, how, where does the light go? Well, the light goes everywhere. It, 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 it has the opportunity to go everywhere, okay? So you can think of this as a point source, and that the light comes out in all dimensions, you know, four pi to radians, right? It comes out in 360 degree sphere, com comes out equally in all directions, right? And so only a part of that light is going to hit the sensor. Some of the light's going to bounce off over here. Some of the light's going to go backwards. Not all the light's going to go towards the sensor, right? And so the, uh, we, we might be able to get more of the light going this direction uh, by using a mirror. Okay, so I have, a, I have a mirror here. And the mirror I'm going to put behind the LED. And so some of the light's going to go direct to the sensor, and then I'm going to put a mirror behind the LED and maybe try to get twice as much light, right? Have the, have the backside light goes that direction also. So we'll see if a mirror uh, can increase the brightness, uh, uh, the amount of light that comes out, right? And then everybody's familiar with flashlights. Uh, so here's a reflector, right? And this reflector happens to fit the, uh, fit the LED. And so we're going to uh, put the LED inside this reflector and see if we can get more light out that way, okay? So let's do that experiment. I'm going to turn off the room lights because right now we're, we're, we have a whole bunch of uh, light hitting here. Let me readjust the camera uh, so we can see what's going on. Let me turn on the LED. Okay, so I have the LED on. And I think we can see that. I think we can see this number down here, right? I'll read it to you, but you can see the number here and you can get the idea. So I'm going to hold the LED at the same distance for everything. I'm going to hold it in one spot, right? And so I'm going to hold it about here. I'm getting about 90, okay? I'm getting a value of 90. Now I'm going to take my mirror. I'm going to hold my mirror. I'm going to hold my mirror behind the, uh, behind the LED, and we went up to 125. So 90 without the mirror. Well, I moved it a bit. So 100 without the mirror, 125 with the mirror. So we're getting about a 25% increase in light by having the mirror, maybe a 30% increase of light by having the mirror. And maybe if I adjust it, adjust it just right, it get a little bit more. But you get the idea that the mirror is, is allowing us to get a little more light in the, uh, in the forward direction, right? So now uh, let me use the, uh, use the reflector. I'm going to put the reflector over the LED and shine it on there. And now we're getting, you know, 500, 540, depending on where we aim it. 
Um, so we've gone up. We've gone up a factor of five, right? At least a factor of five by by using using the reflector. Okay. All right. So I think everybody understands optics. Everybody's everybody's familiar with this. Well, this is exactly how antennas work. Believe it or not. And everything we've done here, we can do with radio waves. So let's let's get out a piece of paper and let's talk about antenna gain. All right. So. Um, on paper, we're going we're gonna to kind of describe what we just did. We had a point source, and we had light coming out in 360 degrees, right? And so the light came out in all directions. And we're going to call this isotropic. Isotropic, okay? So this, this isotropic radiation, it radiates outwards, is in all directions. Now, it's going to be really, really difficult for me to talk about things in three dimensions, so I'm going to describe everything in two dimensions, and I'll leave it up to you to think about how that, how that goes into three dimensions. But all the concepts in two dimensions is exactly the same in three dimensions, okay? So in isotropic, we're going to say it's a circle, that everything comes out equally. You could think of this as a vector, maybe. Uh, comes out at different angles, but the length of each vector is exactly the same no matter which direction you go. And the length of the vector is going to be the intensity, right? So if I had a longer uh, vector, it'd be brighter. If I had a shorter vector, it'd be dimmer, right? But everything goes out in the same direction, right? So this is going to be our starting point, isotropic, right? So this is like our LED, LED here in the middle it goes everywhere. Okay, so let's talk about antennas. Um, dipole antennas, right? People are familiar with dipole antennas. It's a half wavelength. Each 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 side is a uh, is a quarter wavelength. So, how do the radio waves come out of here? People know kind of know where uh, the currents and voltages flow and that kind of thing. But what about the actual radiated power off of a uh, uh, out of a uh, dipole antenna? Well, it looks something like this. Okay, and so it's in three dimensions. It's a donut, you know, it's a bagel, right? Um, but we're going to talk about it in two dimensions. So this is what it looks like in two dimensions. So we can think of the arrows in this direction. The arrow is that long, and this direction is a little bit shorter. And this direction, it's 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 quite short, right? So this is how the electromagnetism leaves an antenna in intensity. It's not isotropic. It's actually this donut type thing, right? And so if, if you're a, a radio person over here, then you get a nice strong signal. But if you happen to be over here, you get a weak signal because uh, you're not on the good side of the donut, right? And so th that is the definition of gain. It is how better is it in one direction as opposed to a different direction, all right? And in particular, how much better is it than this one, okay? So isotropic is uh, a gain of zero, okay? They say that uh, an isotropic antenna has a gain of zero. Now, there's no such thing as an isotropic antenna, okay? This doesn't exist. It's only a mathematical concept or a physical concept. We say that this is a gain of zero. If you had this condition where everything went off into two pi star radians, you would have a gain of zero, but we don't. We have this weird lumpy thing, right? So it's better in one direction and less in the other direction. Now, if you think of the area of this circle, that's how much power you have, okay? The amount of power, let's say you have a 100 watt transmitter. Well, you have 100 watts in this circle, right? That's the area. And over here, we have the area of these two sections here. And the area on these two is set to be the same. Okay, if you want to do this gain measurement, you say, okay, if I have 100 watts here, and I have 100 watts here, then the two areas are the same, right? So this circle here has 50 watts of power in it, and this circle here has 50 watts of power in it. And um, it, it's uh, going to be a, a certain size bigger than this one, okay? And if you take a look at the um, relationship between these two, you'll find out that this vector 
is twice as long as these vectors, okay? So this donut, this donut thing here is going to look something like this, all right? So all of this power that used to be there gets put up into this power, and you have twice, you have twice the vector length here, right? So a dipole antenna has a gain of two. Okay, that's just by definition. Right? Gain of zero, gain of two. And you can see that you should use your dipole antenna wisely. You should point it in the right direction. If you want to talk to this fellow over here, make sure your dipole antenna is pointed this way and, and, and not pointed this way, right? And so um, that would be good. So let's talk about the next thing we did. We put a reflector behind the LED, remember? So now let's say we have a, a dipole antenna and we put a reflector behind it, okay? So we have this reflector, right? So we would have our, a donut on this side and then the light would come here and it would bounce off this uh, reflector and it would come back, okay? So how, how does this work, right? So it's a little bit different than light. Um, it's going to interact with this reflector if it's close to the dipole. And what happens is that you get a new radiation pattern. So a radiation pattern for something like this might look like might look like that. Okay. Uh, there's constructive and destructive interference of these two waves. And the wave that normally would go this way, you've got a wave that bounces and comes right back up in phase and they cancel each other out, depending on the distance. So if the distance were, what, quarter wave or eighth of a wave, forget how that works anyway, some distance, it'll cancel that middle one out. But the ones on the side, you'll get two phases in a line and they'll add. And so you'll get this very, very long line in this direction. So the gain of this one's going to be better than two, right? It's going to be higher gain, but it comes at the disadvantage of you have to point it correctly, right? So now if you want to talk to that guy, you're going to have to point it in this direction, right? So you have to know how to point your antenna depending on what the radiation pattern of the antenna looks like, right? All right. So let's talk about a uh, vertical antenna, right? So a vertical antenna is actually a quarter wave with a ground plane, and it uh, looks like it's actually a um, a dipole mirrored up, right? So normally this would have a radiation pattern like this if it were a dipole, but now we're flipping it up with a mirror and it's gonna have a weird radiation pattern like this, right? And so it, it also has gain over a dipole. It has gain over a dipole. Uh, I talked about Yagi antennas. So Yagi antennas are a reflector and a director, or multiple directors. And they may have a radiation pattern that looks something like this. And so you get a very long vector in this direction, but very, very small ones. And this one is very directional. You really, really have to point this one. Remember we used that um, parabolic reflector on our... Uh, on our um, on our LED, well, guess what? They do that with antennas, right? They put the little dipole. You have to have a small dipole because you're going to have to have a really big reflector, right? So the size of the reflector has to match the size of the uh, size of the dipole. And if you've ever taken a look at astronomy telescopes, radio telescopes, they have very, very, very big reflectors. And the reason they use reflectors is they have very, very high gain. Um, the radio waves come out and they bounce and they kind of all go in that direction, right? That's the definition of a, uh, of a parabola, that at the focus, all rays will come out parallel on, onto the other side, right? So now we have a very, very narrow radiation pattern, maybe with some side lobes, very, very narrow, very high gain, maybe a gain of 40, um, uh, very, very high gains in these type of situations. So if you have very short wavelengths, it's easy to do this. If you have very long wavelengths, of course, then the antenna gets way too big for, you know, normal use. <laughs> um, 
All right, so now that we understand a tanagain, and tanagain is the shape of the lobes, it has nothing to do with VSWR, it has nothing to do with uh, impedance matching, nothing to do with uh, Im complex impedances or anything like that, nothing you can measure with a VNA or a spectrum analyzer can measure antenna gain. None of those pieces of equipment can measure antenna gain, okay? The only way to measure antenna gain is to do a very clever test. It's a goniometric test. I'll explain that word later. Um, but let me show you the test setup, all right? So we're going to have a um, antenna that we want to test. Um, Let's say the antenna is, um, well, let's draw it this way because this is, this is usually how it's done, okay? Well, we can, we, we'll, I'll explain it this way, okay. So we have a dipole, okay? So let's say that we have a dipole antenna that we want to measure, right? And we want to measure this lobes. We want to measure how those lobes work. So what we do is uh, we take a, a receive antenna, that we know works really well and we have a power meter associated with it so we can measure how many microwatts of power we might be able to receive on that antenna and we go over here and we measure it so we measure how much how much intensity is coming in this direction and then we walk this direction and we measure it here and then we walk this direction and we measure it here and 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 we go all the way around and each time we'll get a different amount of power, right? As we walk around our receiver, we'll go up in S numbers and we'll go down in S numbers and we can walk around the antenna and we can get an idea of how good the antenna is, all right? So uh, this is called goineometric, goineometric, I think I was spelling that right, goineometric, uh, which just means moving it in directions. Of course, you would do this in three dimensions, not just two dimensions. Um, and then uh, you have to worry about, well, you know, there's a big, there's a big radio station over here transmitting all this 50,000 watts of power and it's going to interfere with your measurement. So you have to put this in a box to make sure that no radio waves come into the box because you only want your radio wave in the box. And then you don't want the box to be reflective. You don't want to have a radio wave hit the hit the uh, mirror and come back to the receiver. Well, that'll screw up your measurements. So you have to make sure that the walls of your room don't reflect. Okay? And so you have to have an anechoic chamber. So you have to have an anechoic chamber that's RF sealed. It's radio radio an an radio wave, you know, RF anechoic and um, you have to be able to do this, this, this thing. And so you go to an antenna measurement specialist and he has a room like this. He has an anechoic chamber. He has uh, a receiver and a real fancy antenna. They're usually a biconical antenna uh, that are very broadband and they're calibrated and they're multi-thousand dollars. And he hooks that up uh, to a fancy, uh, I think it actually is a spectrum analyzer, but it has, a, it has an LNA in front of it and it's calibrated. And anyway, a lot of, a lot of thought goes into this piece of measurement equipment. And then he has this antenna mounted on motors and the motors automatically zip around in three dimensions, okay? And they measure the radiation pattern of this antenna. And it's a lengthy thing to do, an expensive thing to do. Um, these anechoic chambers are also used to measure the EMI of a of a instrument. So when you build a piece of test equipment or a computer or an iPhone or whatever, you go to these people to make sure it's certified for radiated emissions. And they use the same... They use the same uh, uh, setup. They put your device under test in the middle, and then they walk around it and see if any radio waves come out of it, and they'll tell you whether it's good or bad, and you pay a bunch of money to them, and I've done this before. Okay, I hope that helped a little bit in, in uh, understanding antenna gain. Uh, you can read about it in books like the, uh, the Antenna Book. Uh, you know, these are kind of pictures I was trying to draw, and this is a dipole, and here's one that's over a reflector, so you get these... Uh, 
get these side lobes. They get more complicated if um, you have a longer wavelength or shorter wavelength, or uh, this is a graph of what, what about your dipole over the ground? Your ground acts as a mirror. So those theoretical measurements I talked about antennas, that's an antenna in free space, not an antenna next to a mirror like, like the Earth. So radio waves bounce off the Earth. So how does that interact if you put up a, a, a dipole antenna in your backyard? Well, if the antenna is seven-eighths of a wavelength above the ground, it, the radiation pattern looks like that. If it's one and a half wavelengths above the ground, it looks like that. And so the radiation can change depending on your distance to the mirror, which is, which is Earth, right? And so there's a whole bunch of things that you can learn about antennas. And uh, I, I find it a real interesting subject. Um, unfortunately, you can't use your tiny SA, you can't use your nano VNA. Um, you're going to have to leave it to the professionals, and uh, the very best you can do is maybe walk around with a handheld uh, whip antenna and try to figure out if you have radiation in more in one direction or another.